Today we're going to be looking at the DJI Phantom 2 Vision Plus. This is DJI's latest generation of camera equipped quadcopters for the consumer market. There are currently three versions of the Phantom 2. The least expensive base version which you can equip with an optional gimbal and camera. The Vision 2 which has an HD camera without a gimbal and the Vision 2 Plus with an HD camera and a gimbal. The version we're looking at today is the Vision 2 Plus. Now you might ask why this quadcopter is so different from other quadcopters or quadcopters you could build. And to understand the value of this product, you need to look at what it took to build a quadcopter before the Phantom series was released. You would first have to either buy or build a frame like this one, then buy a host of components like motors and flight controllers to install on your frame. Then after a few weekends building your quadcopter, you might eventually be able to fly it. The quality of the parts was questionable and nothing really quite worked flawlessly. And for those who weren't so technically inclined, things were even worse when something didn't quite work. In fact, you'd probably end up spending more time getting the quadcopter to fly than getting footage from flying the quadcopter. The Phantom is ready to fly, out of the box, and almost anyone can learn to fly it and get great footage from it. It allows you to focus more on the footage than the actual aircraft. Let's take a closer look at the quadcopter and its accessories. The quadcopter is about 23 inches long from propeller tip to propeller tip and is about 8 inches tall. The body is made from a hard white plastic with the motors mounted at each corner. The Phantom comes almost fully assembled and all you have to do is install the propellers, insert the battery and you're ready to fly. The propellers on the quadcopter are self-tightening propellers so you don't have to worry about them coming off mid-flight. Each of the propellers and motors are color coded so you won't have to guess which ones go on which motor. A very thoughtful touch. The battery is a smart battery that indicates the current battery battery level and charge level when the battery is charging. The battery slides into the battery compartment on the quadcopter and locks into place. No connections to make or wires to plug in. The battery also doubles up as the on off switch for the Phantom. To turn the quadcopter on, press the button on the battery down once and then press it again and hold till all the lights on the battery light up and you hear this tone. Shutting the quadcopter off is quite similar. We'll show you the startup procedure in more detail when we take it out and fly it in a minute. Now a safety tip. If you're working with the quadcopter very close to you and it's powered on like we're doing now, make sure to take the propellers off just to ensure it doesn't accidentally get triggered and hurt someone. Right opposite the battery bay is a micro USB port. This port is used to connect the Phantom to a Mac or PC and update the firmware and settings using DJI's assistant software. It's recommended you get the latest software update before you go flying for the first time. The camera is mounted on a two-axis gimbal that is mounted through vibration isolation to the body of the quadcopter. When the Phantom's powered on, you can see that the gimbal keeps the camera extremely steady even when the quadcopter is moved. The gimbal mount also has a micro SD card slot for a micro SD card on which your footage is recorded. The landing gear on the Phantom is made from the same plastic as the body but is very robust. It also houses the compass module and the radio antenna. The undercarriage of the quadcopter has four LED indicator lights, two in the front to indicate the quadcopter is is powered on and two in the back that indicate GPS readiness and flight modes. A slow yellow blinking light on the rear indicators indicate that the Phantom is ready to fly but has no GPS assistance, while a slow flashing green indicates a good GPS lock. A fast flashing yellow indicates that the Phantom has lost its connection to the remote controller. The Phantom's remote controller is simple, yet very well laid out. There's an on-off switch with an LED indicator on the bottom of the controller. The control sticks are laid out in the Mode 2 format with the throttle and rudder on the left stick and the pitch and roll on the right stick. There are two switches labeled S1 and S2 all the way on top. These switches control flight modes and a few other functions. We'll show you some of that when we fly the Phantom. And there's the 5.8 GHz control antenna all the way on the top edge. Right behind that is a mount rail with a smartphone clamp so you can connect a smartphone to monitor the footage and flight information and there's also a Wi-Fi range extender to connect the smartphone to the Phantom. The main controller is powered by four AA batteries that are provided with the quadcopter and the Wi-Fi range extender is rechargeable via a micro USB cable that is also provided. Now some very essential safety tips before we go out and fly the Phantom. It's not a toy helicopter. If it crashes into people and property, it can do 
damage, treat it like an aircraft and not a toy. The Phantom 2 is not an indoor aircraft. Flying it indoors could damage your craft and cause injuries to people around it. Do not fly it over crowded areas or lots of people. Again, understand that if the craft does crash, it can cause quite a bit of damage to the people or property under it. Practice flying in a large open field or empty lot before trying to shoot footage with it. This helps to improve your piloting skills. Remember, this isn't just a camera, it's an aircraft with a camera. Be careful about full-size aircraft in the airspace around you. Do not try and chase or fly close to full-size aircraft. Crashing into an aircraft can do a lot of damage to the aircraft and its passengers. If the Phantom has a good GPS lock, it will not take off near restricted airspace such as airports and military locations. More information about this can be found on DJI's website. Make sure to stay at least 10 feet away from the Phantom before you start the motors up. This prevents you from being seriously injured if you lose control control of the aircraft when it takes off. Stick to the 10 feet rule when landing the aircraft as well. Turn your transmitter off before you approach the Phantom to replace batteries or to power the quad down. This prevents you from accidentally turning on the motors and letting the Phantom take off when you approach it. Now if you do happen to lose control of the Phantom for some reason, increase the throttle and take it about 50 feet higher into clear airspace and then regain control over the aircraft and land the aircraft safely. Clear airspace buys you time to regain control and prevents you from crashing into anything. If you're in the US, there are currently a few Federal Aviation Administration or FAA rules that you need to follow. FAA rules do not allow users to fly model aircraft above 400 feet. The FAA also currently prevents you from flying your quadcopter for commercial purposes. It's fine to shoot family events or vacation footage, but shooting footage commercially is currently illegal in the US. I've put a link to some FAA do's and don'ts in the description below. So let's go out and fly the Phantom. To start flying the Phantom, the three things you need are the quadcopter itself, the smart battery, and the transmitter. The first step to prepping the Phantom is to remove the lens cover and the gimbal clip. This frees up the gimbal so it can move when the Phantom is powered on. Next, mount your smartphone to the smartphone holder and make sure switches S1 and S2 are in their uppermost positions. Then power on your transmitter. The LED will turn solid green. Now we're not going to turn on the Wi-Fi range extender just yet yet. Insert the battery into the battery compartment and it locks into place. Power the battery on and the rear LEDs will now start blinking yellow. This indicates the quad is ready to fly but has no GPS lock yet. When you fly for the first time in a specific place, it's recommended you calibrate the compass. To do this, flip switch S1 on the transmitter up and down till the lights on the Phantom turn a solid yellow. Now rotate the Phantom on its vertical axis till the LEDs turn a solid green. Then rotate the Phantom on its horizontal axis till the LEDs start blinking yellow again. Within a few seconds, the lights will turn to a blinking green, indicating the Phantom has a GPS lock. Now in some places with taller buildings or lots of trees, it will be a little harder to get a good GPS lock. For novice pilots, we recommend flying only if you get a good GPS lock. Now we're going to turn on the Wi-Fi range extender and wait till the system LED flashes green. On your smartphone, connect to a Wi-Fi network called Phantom, then open up the DJI Vision app, and if the Wi-Fi Wi-Fi has connected properly, you will see a green dot with the word Phantom next to it. Tap on the camera icon and this opens up the camera interface and you should now be able to see the live video feed from the Phantom. Basic information like distance from home and altitude. There are icons to begin recording and take photos. There are also gauges that indicate the battery life on the craft and battery life on the Wi-Fi antenna. It also shows you the number of GPS satellites you're locked onto. The more satellites, the better. All extremely useful information. Now before we power up the motors, it's advisable to place the Phantom on a firm surface like a rubber mat or a piece of plywood. This prevents debris and grass from affecting the camera and the gimbal during takeoff and landing. Make sure the aircraft is always oriented with the battery LEDs facing you. This makes it much easier to fly the craft. I'll show you the stick movements I use to make different moves in the lower right hand corner of the screen. To power on the motors, move both sticks to the bottom and then towards each other. The motors then begin to run at a very slow speed. Speed. The craft won't take off until you give it more power. To take it into the air, increase the throttle by moving the left stick up gently. The aircraft rises into the air and will maintain a pretty steady hover if you move the throttle back down to about 50%. The right stick controls the forward and backward and the left and right motions. So pushing the right stick to the right moves the aircraft to the right. Similarly, moving it to the left makes the aircraft move across 
to the left. Now we recommend practicing some basic hovering and moving around movements before going on to more complicated maneuvers. The left stick moved to the right and left acts as the virtual rudder and allows you to turn the aircraft around. Though this maneuver is not recommended for beginner pilots, mixing movements on your right stick allow you to fly more complex paths like circles or ovals. The aircraft also rises extremely fast to some very respectable heights. Great for aerial footage. And once the aircraft is in the air, you can adjust your camera tilt angle from the interface on the app, as you can see here. The aircraft is also very forgiving in GPS mode. It maintains a stable hover and can fight a light breeze pretty effortlessly. And in the event your transmitter loses connection with the craft or you lose control of your craft, the Phantom will go into failsafe mode. I'm going to demonstrate this by turning the transmitter off when the Phantom is in the air. The Phantom then automatically rises to a safe height to avoid obstacles and then slowly flies back to within about 3 meters of where it took off and then slowly lands itself. Now you can see that the craft landed a distance away from the blue mat where it took off. So the GPS accuracy isn't perfect, but it's definitely a very cool safety feature. To land the craft manually in normal circumstances, gradually reduce the throttle till the craft touches the ground. To power the motors off, move both sticks down and inwards again. DJI also recently added the ground station functionality to the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. This allows the Phantom to fly pretty much any flight path you choose. In this case, we use the Vision app to specify a triangular flight path and enter the altitude at each waypoint. Hit go and the aircraft takes off, flies the path and returns to its home point all without any pilot input. Now, if you're in the US, remember that autonomous flight is only legal within line of sight. So you must be able to see the craft even if it's just flying itself. You can't exactly make it fly to the next town and back. Very cool feature again and extremely well executed. The interface is very well thought out and easy enough for just about anyone to use. Once in the air, the Phantom can fly for about 25 minutes on a single charge. For safety's sake, we recommend that you bring it down after about 20 to 22 minutes. There is, however, a very audible low battery alarm when the battery gets below 35% charge. You can either swap out the battery or recharge your battery and go flying again. Now we'll show you some footage we shot with the Phantom so you can see how it performs. The footage is pretty good and extremely stable thanks to the gimbal, but is definitely not as good as the footage from say a GoPro Hero 3 Plus. There's quite a bit of moiré and aliasing and the saturation is lacking, but definitely very usable footage with a bit of color grading. The still photos are also pretty good as you can see here. One thing we don't like about the Phantom 2 is the Wi-Fi connection. The connection is sometimes rather unreliable and choppy. This doesn't really affect the way the craft flies or the footage being captured, but DJI can definitely work on this issue, possibly through a future software update. We really recommend getting a foam-lined hard shell case like this one to protect your Phantom and its accessories. Definitely a worthwhile investment since you're likely to travel a lot with the Phantom. There are links to a few such boxes in the description below. So over Overall, the Phantom 2 Vision Plus is a big leap forward in the world of aerial videography. It's a stable, refined and reliable platform that is simple enough for almost anyone to use. Its safety features reduce pilot load and let you focus on actually shooting the footage. While it does have some minor glitches, we definitely recommend the Vision Plus if you're looking for a semi-professional or consumer grade aerial camera platform. Hope this review has been helpful, if it has, please like the video video and subscribe for more reviews. Thanks for watching.